Everybody, you are just in time for What's Hot. This is where we talk about those stories that have everybody talking. We're joined today by Barb Bartline of the People Pro, Jeff Wagner, back with us. Many schools are choosing to monitor students' social media. In Alabama, a school district hired a retired FBI agent to review social media. The purpose? Protects students from dangers like bullying, drug use, violence, and suicide. But the question here, is it the school's job or the parents' job to monitor kids? Well, well, I guess I think I there's an feel, element of I don't both. know, I'm like this on this topic. Well, I think there's, a, there's an element of, of both to that. I mean, obviously, I think if a school sees something that sends up all sorts of red flags, working in conjunction with the parents, you notify them. The problem has been, the way this has played out, is you've had kids that have done stuff on their own time that has little or no connection to school, and the schools weighed in and they've started disciplining them and things like that, that's where I think the slippery slope really comes. Yeah, it, it is a problem, Jeff. I mean, ideally, it's the parent's job. The problem is many parents really don't know how to do that. And so the school has stepped up and taken a role. I actually think it's a good idea, but it needs to be reviewed and maybe some guidelines set. Right, because, I mean, where do you end up drawing the line? I mean, obviously, if children are doing stuff on Facebook or whatever, out in the social media, and, and it impacts on, on school, well, clearly, I mean, I think the school has an interest in making sure that, you know, that they weigh in and they deal with it. At the same time, if this, they're just monitoring it and they see something that has no connection to the school, I, I don't know, I'm just a little bit queasy with them stepping in and telling mom and dad this is going on, because again, where do you draw the line? I guess the barometer is you have to look at what happened before social media. They didn't have access to that information. They didn't know, they couldn't police it. Right. It, and school's role is to educate the students. I think social media is something they need to be educated yeah. on, because many of them make posts that really aren't appropriate. But teachers are also primary reporters. If right. they see something weird going on, they need to tell somebody about it. Yeah, right. but typically that's in, in the classrooms. I don't know that that's carte blanche for teachers becoming private investigators, you know, trolling the Internet, looking well, to see what kids are putting up. let's say they don't troll and they just up. see it. Or hear about it. Or I hear mean, about yeah, it. Yeah, it could right. come up, well, but I, you know, I don't know how exposed they are to it. Yeah. All right, coming up next, we reveal the viewer's choice topic of the day. And Jesse Rick is back with another look at the Election Day forecast. Got some blue skies of the day. Again, we're joined by Barb Bartline. She is the People Pro, and Jeff Wagner is from 620 WTMJ. Viewer's Choice topic today. <laughs> it is Election Day. Hard to avoid that. There are races all across the country. There could also be a shift in the control of the Senate. What are your thoughts about the uh, midterm elections overall? Well, I think probably Jeff and I will cancel each other out, uh, but I went and voted anyways. I, I, <laughs> I'm a firm believer that you don't have any right to complain unless you do vote, and since I like to complain, <laughs> I rarely miss an election. But seriously, what I find sort of gratifying is they're predicting a 70% turnout in the Milwaukee area. That's really amazing for a midterm election. Yeah, I, I think nationally, I think this is going to shape up as being, again, a, what they call a wave election. You saw this, for example, in 2006 and in 2008, where frustrations with then-President Bush led pretty much every um, Republican that was in a close race ended up losing. This is, I think, going to be the opposite. It typically happens when you've got a president who's been in office for six years. Mm -hmm. President Obama, very unpopular right now, if you believe the polls. Um, Republicans are going to extend their majority in the House. Uh, they're going to take control of the Senate. I, I think they're going to pick up at least six. I predict seven, but it could be more than that seats. And it's going to make for an interesting couple of years because I think you're going to have Congress solidly Republican, president who's a lame duck. I don't know what's going to happen. Let it's either going to be good or bad. Let me ask this. We've got about a minute left. David Letterman made a joke last night. Gas is under three bucks a gallon. Unemployment is uh, coming down. Uh, the, economy, the stock market set setting records every day. No wonder nobody likes this guy. <laughs> what, what, what is it? that the president was not able to do to convince people that he's doing a good job when he has those metrics that he was judged by, you know, last time around. Well, I think uh, it depends on the right direction. who you are. The, the uh, Latino community 
is upset with President Obama. Sure. Uh, because immigration wasn't pushed through, you know, reform of immigration wasn't pushed through. But it was a, it was a joke with some, uh, a good question behind it. I well, mean, I what does it take? I, I mean, I think, there, I think people view this world as being a lot more dangerous. There's a lot of people who don't believe the president has been anywhere near as aggressive as he should be in dealing with terrorism. You've got the Ebola thing. Um, yeah, the economy has gotten better, but I think there's a lot of people who think that they've been left behind by this. And I think there's still the issue of Obamacare, which remains very, very controversial. I Barb? think that's a big issue. Yeah. All right. Lightning round time now. Yes. There's a push to bring faster trains to the U.S. Imagine going from Washington, D.C. to Manhattan in an hour. The federal government has a plan for a 300-mile-an-hour train. <laughs> it floats on magnets. <laughs> But guess what? It's expensive. Is this a good idea? I think that kind of infrastructure is a great idea. And, and maybe we don't need a 300 mile an hour train, but you know the technology's been there for a long time to have a 200 mile an hour train. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that kind of investment into the infrastructure. The answer isn't to keep, to keep building roads and, and you know, pushing uh, wider highways. We, we need to find a different way to transport well, people. And two, that I think it would ease up on some of the airline traffic. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you could take a train and shorten that time, a lot well, of people I mean, would you have choose that in, option. Yeah, I mean, you have this in Europe. In, in population centers like they're talking about, I mean, Baltimore to New York, if you could do that commute in a, an hour and a half or something with those huge population centers, it, it would be great. The problem is, you know, we really don't have the truly fast trains in this country, and we don't have the infrastructure right now to build those like they, they do in Europe. But yeah, a really fast train along the eastern seaboard, it would be a great idea. Western Thanks. seaboard too, for that matter. And then, you know what, I want the flying cars. <laughs> we were promised Jetpacks we were. by now, weren't I, we? I grew up watching the, the Jetsons. Jetsons. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> what can you we'll say? We'll get there one day. All right. The What's Hot discussion will continue online. You find it at tmj4.com slash hot. Thank you both. For